today we are going to see one problem on design of the shaft here is the problem a line shaft which is driven by means of the motor placed vertically below it the pulley on the line shaft is 1.5 meter in diameter and has the belt tension uh, 5.4 kN and 1.8 kN on the tight side and the slack side respectively both these tensions may be assumed to be vertical if the pulley of overhanging from the shaft the distance of the center line of the pulley from the center line of the bearing being 400 mm find the diameter of the shaft the shaft is made up of 30 ca uh, that is SYT of that material is equal to 400 newton per mm square and a factor of safety it is given 3 right so this is the problem that a uh, shaft at the end of 400 mm from this bearing to the this is what the pulley and the diameter of the pulley it is 1.5 meter and whatever the load it is acting in that is in downward direction so the two tension T1 and T2. T1 is the tight side and T2 is the uh, slack side. So, uh, this uh, shaft we have to design. So, we will write first the given data as we discussed diameter of the pulley it is 1.5 meter. Then uh, we will convert the diameter into the radius it is half of that. So, 0.75 meter and uh, if we convert into the mm then 750 mm radius of this pulley you will get. Then uh, as they have said that tension in tight side and the slack side they are given. So T1 it is a tension in tight side uh, that is 5.4 kN and that we cannot into the Newton we will get 5400 Newton. Then uh, T2 uh, that is tension in slack side they have given it is 1.8 kN and that is equal to 1800 Newton. So they have given the length uh, from this bearing this end uh, to the uh, center of this pulley. So, this is what the overhanging distance uh, that is of the 400 mm. Then, SYT uh, they have given yield strength of this material that is uh, 400 Newton per mm square. Now, so first we will calculate the allowable shear stress. Whatever the stress they have given, it is the maximum, but here we have to find out the allowable shear stress. Uh, it is what the SYT divided by factor of safety when we are calculating the sigma, but as we are calculating the CSS, it is 0.5 times the SYT. So, 0.5 times SYT divided by factor of safety. So, 0.5 into the yield strength they have gone, it is a 400 and divided by 3, you will get the maximum allowable shear stress for this shaft, it is 66.67 Newton per mm square. So, from the given maximum value, we calculated allowable maximum shear stress. Now, we know that the torque transmitted by the shaft, what is the equation uh, as we are using the pulley, right. So, this is the pulley and uh, T1 and T2 are the tension in that right side and the slack side. And in case of the pulley, uh, if you want to calculate the torque transmitted, we know the equation, the T is equal to T1 minus T2 into the R. R is what it is the radius of the pulley. Now we know the value uh, tension in tight side, tension in slack side and again the radius of this pulley. Uh, then we will put this value in this equation. So 5400 that is tension in tight side, 1800 tension in slack side and 750 mm radius of this pulley. Now from this we will get the, what is the torque uh, may be transmitted by the shaft or the pulley it is the same one. So, therefore, torque T is equal to 2.7 into 10 to 6 Newton mm. And now, here what we are doing, uh, we are neglecting uh, the self weight of the pulley and whatever this T1 and T2, uh, these are acting, these are acting in the downward direction only, right. Right, so here you will come to know that T1 and T2 uh, that are acting in the downward direction. So, if you want to calculate the total uh, downward load, uh, then uh, we have to add that is the tension on tight side and the slack side. So, T1 plus T2 
then you will get total load uh, W it is acting in the downward direction. So the total load W is equal to T1 plus T2 uh, we will put this value and we will get the total uh, downward direction load that is the W is equal to 7 to double 0 Newton. So this value uh, we calculated. Now uh, as C uh, the shaft it is having uh, the two types of the load. One uh, that is due to this uh, the load W which is acting in downward direction uh, that is the uh, bending uh, it may bend and another one as that is there is a torque so this is what the tor torque is there right. So there is two combination of the load that is the bending moment is there and again the torque is there. So right now what we did the first we calculated the uh, torque and now we are going to find out the uh, bending moment. So the bending moment is what the force, uh, this is what are the W it is there into this perpendicular distance, right. So as it is overhanging view, so here it is a force acting that is the W. So W into L uh, that will give, give you the bending moment. So the load uh, which is acting in downward direction already we calculated that is 7 to double zero Newton and uh, the distance from this bearing uh, which is fixed from that end to the pulley, uh, it is a 400 mm. So that we will put. So from this uh, we will get the uh, bending moment. Now uh, we know that the equivalent twisting moment. Now see uh, just now we had said that uh, on this shaft there is bending moment also and the twisting moment also. So the two different types of loads are there. So here we have to find out the equivalent twisting moment. So uh, there is an equation that the E it stands for the equivalent. So equivalent twisting moment is equal to under root uh, bending moment square plus the torque square. So mb square plus t square. And we calculated this value. We will put the bending moment. We calculated 2.88 into 10 to 6. Uh, that it's a square plus torque. We calculated 2.7 into 10 to 6. It's a square. So we will get the equivalent uh, the twisting moment that is uh, 39.47 into 10 raise to 5 Newton mm. So first we, what we did, we calculated the equivalent twisting moment and we know that the torque transmitted by the solid shaft already we are aware about this equation that uh, the T is equal to pi by 16 tau d q. What, whatever this T it is there, it is the equivalent twisting moment and we know already we calculated the equivalent twisting moment and that we will put in this equation. Uh, we know the allowable shear stress, uh, we know the equivalent uh, twisting moment, the only unknown is the uh, diameter. From this, uh, we can calculate the diameter of the shaft. So, by putting this, uh, only the diameter is the unknown and by rearranging this, we will get the d cube is equal to 30.1 into 10 raise to 4 and if we take the cube root of this, uh, then uh, we will get the diameter. So, this is what uh, the diameter we will get the 70 mm. So in this way, uh, we calculate uh, that as it is subjected to two types of the load, that is the bending moment and the twisting moment. Thank you. Uh, next problem we will see in the next lecture.